In this video, we are going to simulate a long exposure effect on a waterfall and then wrap up with some color adjustments. This is going to be a quick and fun video, so let's go! First, I will remove the existing adjustments and then enable the original photo. To create the long exposure effect, we need to blur the moving water. As the water is falling down, the movement is downwards and a motion blur would be exactly what we need. Let me add a live motion blur filter and set its angle to 270 degrees. The blue handle shows us the direction of the movement. Perfect! Now let's increase the radius and also enable Preserve Alpha. A good amount of blur to make that water butter smooth. As we are using a live filter, we can always fine-tune these settings later on. The filter blurred the whole image. By using a mask, we can restrict the blur to the water only. I can apply some magic combos to mask the whites, but in this case, just painting the mask will also do the job. In Affinity, all adjustments or filters come with their own mask meaning we can just paint the mask in the adjustment. But first, let's invert the mask and paint back in the areas where the effect will be applied to. To invert the mask, make sure the filter layer is selected in the layers panel and then either use the command I shortcut or the invert option from the layer menu. To paint back in the effect on the water, we can use a soft brush Lower its flow a bit so the brush is not super strong and then paint with white. A quick tip, you can use the D key to reset the colors to black and white and with the X key you can toggle between them, which is ideal during masking. I'll start with the two main streams. I'm doing this roughly and quite quickly, but make sure that you exclude the non-moving areas. Once I'm happy with these two main streams, I can apply the same for the smaller areas, but if I paint it in, you notice it blurs too much. So what can we do? We can lower the flow of the brush to around 10% and gradually paint in the effect until it looks natural. That looks awesome! As mentioned earlier, we can adjust the blur radius as we use live filters. I'm going to experiment with the radius and the blur until I'm happy. To blend the effect more naturally, I'm going to change its blend range, in a way that it will gradually apply from the shadows. Or in other words, we are lowering the effect in the shadows. If you look closely, this generates a more realistic look on the smaller streams of the water, because the darker background becomes visible. Optionally, we can also adjust the opacity of the filter. One last thing to add, a median blur for the lake area, where the water is falling into. As we are trying to simulate a long exposure, the moving water in the lake needs to be blurred too. Same idea, increase the blur, invert the mask and gradually paint in the effect. I'm guessing the area at the end of the waterfall should be more blurry as it probably has more movement there. That looks amazing already. Optionally, we can do some fine tuning, especially where the waterfall starts. Because of the blur effect, the watercolor got contaminated. I can just add a pixel layer and with a low flow white brush, make it slowly brighter. This is one way. You can also use a curves adjustment to brighten things up and then mask that. And there are many other ways of doing this. Once done painting with white, I can zoom out and check how it looks. Using a soft eraser, I can make small fixes in the pixel layer to make sure it blends in nicely. Awesome, I think we're finished with the effect. Keep watching to see some color adjustments to which I think will suit this image. As mentioned in my earlier videos, I will add a zero curve first. For more information about the Y, see the link in the description. 
To bring back a bit of contrast, I will add a brightness and contrast adjustment and crank up the contrast and really lower the brightness. Looks crazy, but when I change the adjustment to soft light blend mode, it makes a nice subtle difference. I'm also not really happy with the colors. It's too bluish. I want to give it a more of a jungle look. One way of doing that is using a subtract curve, which is basically a curves adjustment in subtract blend mode. I'm going to subtract a little bit from the bright areas to make it look more natural and then adjust the red and the blue to get that warmer look. Let's compare the image without the adjustments. Pretty nice. The image did get darker, so to compensate for that, an exposure adjustment, which we are going to apply more to the shadows by adjusting its blend range. Applying this blend range will make sure that the sky does not get too bright. As a final step, I want the water to be really white. So I'm going to add a brightness and contrast adjustment again, and then with the blend ranges, target the water. This will succeed for 90%. The areas that are not water and still affected, I will mask them out by painting with black on the mask of the adjustment. Let's have a look at the before and the after. Pretty awesome. I think this is a much more natural looking photo. I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching.